Joining us now is an absolute legend of a man. The last time we chit-chatted with him, he said, hey, I'm going to send you guys some stuff. And he did. A workout machine. I don't know what the course record is. I might have had it, though. I was punching the shit out and kicking the shit out of that oh, thing. Yeah. He sent us some gloves from Sign from Diamond Dust and Poirier, a bunch of Venom stuff, UFC stuff, a couple bags. We can't thank you enough for your time and your gifts. It is being used properly, ladies and gentlemen. The president of, C, uh, of UFC, Dana White. Yeah! What's up, dude? What's up, buddy? How are you? Hey, what's the high score on that thing? I, I was punching the shit out of it. You know, I was punching the hell out of that thing. I was going to town on it. That thing's beautiful. Yeah, we're, we, it, it's 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 like I told you, it's in design still. We're still playing with it and and trying to make it better. But uh, I I knew you'd have some fun with it. Yeah, and, and it's fun because you can punch it without gloves on. It feels good. Yeah, so I didn't have gloves on. Everybody was telling me I was supposed to punch a cross or whatever. And you, I think anytime you have one of those, there's metal behind there. So I didn't want to happen to do that. But I was unloading on those things, and the hands were completely fine. So I just want to thank you for all the gifts. You're a very nice man. The pleasure. Yeah, that's one of the things we need to fix. You can't throw hooks on it yet. we got to fix the hook. Oh, so I was right. Everybody on the internet was wrong. I fucking thought so. Yeah, Never would have guessed. Never would have guessed that was the case. Uh, <laughs> how are you doing? How's life? Haven't chatted with you in a bit. What's life like over in the UFC? I know we got a big fight card coming up. We'll get to it. But what's life like for you? Everything good? Everything's good, man. I just uh, I just spent the weekend in Boston and uh, oh, yeah. flew back in yesterday for the Contender Series and getting ready for the fights this weekend, man. Everything's good. Hey, Fuck It Friday has become one of my favorite things. I, too, like to eat ridiculous shit. Are you cooking that? And why don't we have ghost kitchens yet for DoorDash on all the Fuck It Friday food that you... I think you had a Fruity Pebble French toast Ooh. that, that I, like, almost died at, and then there was a burrito burger, I think, that everybody was trying to do. <laughs> that has become a great series in there, Dana. You know what's crazy? So Fuck It Friday has become so big. I actually got a, a, a show on the Food Network. Let's go! So there is shit happening. Yeah, it's, it's eight episodes. I start filming soon, and it's called Fuck It Friday. What, do they put a star asterisk? What, what is it? How are they going to do that? On I don't the... know how they're going to do it. They're, they're going to have to figure that out. Yeah, <laughs> Friday. That's what they wanted to go with. So we're going with Fuck It Friday. And, uh, yeah, I'm a foodie. I love eating all different types of food, um, trying different stuff. So, um it's fun for me. It's, I, I just started out just doing it as, for fun. Oh, Damn. look at that burrito burger oh. there. It's like a Crunchwrap Supreme almost, it looks like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it's a knockoff of the Crunchwrap Supreme. Oh, so that's the fuck it Friday uh, method is the knockoff of all the other shit. Let's make it a little better. <laughs> you know what? It's the fuck it Friday started with uh, eating. I, I, I ate a fried chicken sandwich and donuts. It was donuts oh. with a fried oh. chicken sandwich in it. Then from there, we went to the, uh, what came out at that time? The, the, Taco Bell uh, Cheeto burrito oh, yeah. thing. You know, so I had my guys make it here, and, and, you know, that's how it really all got started. What's life like? You just have your own chefs now. At the, hey, by the way, congratulations. Yeah. yeah. Just slap dick from Boston. You know, great work ethic. Boxing goes over to UFC, figures out a way to buy a company that you see the future of. It goes on to become worth billions of dollars. Now you got your own chef fucking knocking off Taco Bell. <laughs> Good for you, dude. Yeah. Good for Woo! you, dude. That's yeah. awesome. It doesn't suck. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't suck. This fight card coming up this weekend's a big one. I mean, I, we literally just started going through it, and obviously... Everybody knows about Volkanovski and Ortega, but the entire lineup seems to be sweet. What should we be looking forward to? Diaz Lawler get Diaz is it? Diaz Lawler <laughs> getting back in. Is that a five rounder like his brother had for no championship, or are they doing three rounds there? It is. It is a five rounder. Here we go. Um, and uh, it's five rounds. You know, obviously, I don't. I, you know, we're gonna find out. Nick hasn't fought in a while, but one thing we know about the Diaz brothers is they always come to fight. So um, that should be fun. Uh, obviously, Valentina Shevchenko is an absolute savage. Every time she fights, it's, 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 it's unbelievable. What I like about Lauren Murphy is Lauren Murphy's got a bunch of knockouts and submissions uh, in, in her win. So, you know, for women at, at that weight to actually knock out other women, uh, it, it's tough to do. And, and Lauren's been on a roll. So that should be a fun fight. And then Alexander Volkanovsky versus Brian Ortega is an absolute war so uh great card card this weekend 
How when you, when you go about, and I know you're probably in, I don't know if you're in the room where you actually do the fight matchups and everything like that. You're always having to figure that thing out. Whenever you see like a guy on a 19 fight win streak or whatever, and then you get a chance to put him up against Ortega, like, is that like, does a light bulb go off? Is it like, hey, this is a win? Or do you have to get the fighters to agree to it beforehand? Or do you, do you schedule the fights and then you reach out to the fighters? How does the whole process behind the scenes work with that whole thing? Yeah, so I'm in the war room right now. This is where we make all the fights. This is where I spend most of my day. And, um, you know, we put together the fights that, 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 that need to happen, that should happen, and then we reach out to the fighters and, and, and make the deals. But, yeah, every, I mean, every weekend, like this Saturday, the absolute best fighters in the world in each weight class will face off and fight each other. Then on Tuesday on, you know, my contender series, we find the best unsigned fighters on the planet and we match them up in each weight class. I mean, every time you tune into the UFC, you're watching the absolute best in the world um, you know, fighting. And Patty the Batty uh, who has become one of everybody's favorite humans, the scouser with the incredible accent. I think he was burning a Marlboro Red on the front porch last <laughs> night on his like Instagram. It. You know, and he ate punches and we had him on the show and he actually said like he was waiting to get to the UFC because he didn't think he was ready yet. He didn't think he was ready. Then he comes in there, and one of his weapons is, like, just eating punches. Like, his face is a weapon. And for you, that has to be a dream, right? Whenever you have a guy like that and whenever you have other fighters, is that what the Contender Series is for? Like, hey, who could potentially be lightning for us? Who could potentially go to be champion? And when you see a guy like Patty, how, how do you resist the urge of not being like, all right, let's fucking put this guy, let's go to England and put this guy in a main event? Like, how do you resist that urge? What do you know when it's right and when it's not? Yeah, well, obviously, you got to look at their record. You got to look at who they fought in their last couple of fights. And uh, and you bring them in, and there's only one way to find out who's really ready and who's not. And nothing is more perfect than finding out if somebody's ready or not than the Contender Series. Uh, whenever people come fight in the Contender Series, are they under the impression that they could win a UFC contract? Because everybody remembers the Ultimate Fighter. That was a game changer. Oh, yeah. hey, the Ultimate Fighter was a game changer. I mean, I think that introduced MMA to people that maybe would have never got into it because it's more of like a reality show, plus there's fights in there. So I thought it was great. Do people go into the Contender Series with the mindset like, hey, we're going to get a UFC contract if we win on the other side? Yeah, or, well, or, they it, know. You know, we, we call it. Uh, the ultimate job interview. You know, you come in and you have to perform. And the other thing that I love about it is that the amount of pressure that these fighters are under. That's the other thing. Can you handle the pressure of, of being in here and performing un under this unbelievable amount of pressure? But, so it, it is the perfect formula to find out who's ready and who's not. Hey, whenever you have that like billionaire's row almost at every UFC event, right? It, <laughs> it seems like on the hard camera side, obviously, there's just a slew of people who have been very successful in their life. It's become the new thing. Like, hey, if you get uh, MGK and uh, Megan Fox and then Travis and uh, Courtney, and it's become the new thing, the it thing to be at UFC fights. Is that something you did on purpose, or is this them reaching out to you as fans saying, hey, is there any way I can get in there? I assume that's a, not an easy ticket to give out or to get. And if you piss somebody off, I assume there's a little bit of a dance in that whole thing, Dana, or no? Well, people reach out, and uh, people reach out and, and ask for tickets. Yeah, so there's, there's three different sections. So Billionaire's Row was at the McGregor fight. So the last McGregor fight, you, you'll see the section behind me where I sit. That, that's, that's my section right there. Okay, off to the left, where you see the fighters, where, where, where they're all sitting, and uh, you know, guys will walk up to the octagon and walk in. There's fighters there. So when Connor fought, I had to cut the media section in half, and I built what was called Billionaires Row. Everybody in, in the first three rows there were all billionaires. Jeez. <laughs> Hey, that's pretty good for business. Yeah. That's pretty good for business, Zunk. That is good news over there. Um, when you think of, like, a Conor McGregor, and then you see, like, Sugar Sean is gaining some buzz, and Patty has some buzz, That's you need that, right? That is something that the UFC needs, and are you always trying to build those? And do you watch, like, WWE to see, like, how, or, or did you learn anything from WWE on how they, or is that kind of like the fighters? Like, Connor is an incredible promoter. Sugar Sean is an incredible promoter. Patty is an incredible promoter. Is that kind of on them, you think, or is it kind of like a partnership to build these megastars that do create these billionaire road-type situations? 
Yeah, so what happens is, you, you know, obviously we're, we're looking, the first and foremost thing that we're looking for is talent. Can you fight here? Can, can, are, are you good enough? Can you fight? Then, if you have the personality of, of one of those type of guys, it's just, it's just a home run. And obviously, um, you know, we know how strong they are. We know uh, how many people are watching. You know, I, I, I go through the ratings and break down every single uh, hour of a fight, you know, and we know who, who, who pops and who doesn't. So uh, you know, there's a lot of a lot of things that are involved in going into to, to figuring out where somebody is placed on the card and uh, how they draw. Yeah, do you want to lead off with hot heat and then end with heat, right? Is that kind of the, the plan when you're yeah, shaping? Yeah, you want to open the show with, with a pop, and you hopefully want the show to end with a pop. And what I'm looking for is when I put on a fight card, I'm looking for three or four holy shit moments where everybody, whether you're at the arena or you're at home, everybody jumps out of their seat and looks at each other and goes, holy shit! <laughs> you know, there's that whole, you know, that, that energy that happens with that moment. I'm looking for three or four of those per card. Well, Diaz and Lawler are going to give you at least two of those. Oh, yeah. I mean, that, that feels like that is obviously set up, and then Volkovsky obviously can go. And go ahead, Ty. We're talking to Dana White, obviously. Thank you for your time right now, Dana. You're the man. Go ahead, Ty. Dana, obviously you guys have the events at T-Mobile or MGM and, and all that kind of stuff. Are there any plans to have maybe like a year-end card at Allegiant Stadium? Um, and also, like, have you noticed any more of a buzz in Vegas with the Raiders being there now, or are you so busy that you don't really see any of that shit? Yeah, no, um, I, I don't know. You know, we'll, we'll see what, what fights materialize over the rest of the year. Um, but you're talking 70,000 seats. Yeah. Um, and to kind of to create the kind of energy and buzz that I like in a fight, you know, you've you got to sell the place out. So I, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how that plays out. And yes, you know, when you drive to work here in, in Vegas, everybody has either a Raider license plate and Raider stickers on their car or the Golden Knights uh plate and gold night stickers on their car so um vegas has become a massive sports town this place is going crazy uh you know for, for any kind of sporting event right i think this weekend we got ufc the nfl uh, may, may, uh hockey is uh is like preseason nascar is this weekend oh yeah look at vegas what am i forgetting probably a fucking ping pong match. <laughs> I mean, everything sports is happening here this weekend. You know, Vegas, a place that never had sports. Yeah. Yeah, UNLV. That was it. Everybody was scared of Vegas because of the gambling, and now that sports books are kind of going, it feels like it's going to become a destination place more and more, and that Raiders team feels like it's the perfect vibe for Las Vegas. It just feels like it was perfect, and obviously the Vegas Golden Knights lose Marc-Andre Fleury, oh, so, yeah. I mean... It. Who knows what's going to happen with them? Penguins probably going to fucking Stanley Cup. I mean, That's boring, bro. Yeah, Vegas is a great host city, man. Always has been, always will. But you still talk to the Fertitta brothers much? All the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the time. Are they completely out of the business? Did they get? They just did. Are they completely out of the business? Or are they still part? I saw them at a fight, I think, and and they were the connection to Vegas, I think, for you, right? Immediately. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're you know, uh, still talk. I met with them last week. Uh, you know, it, I'm in a lot of different business deals with them. You know, still from from <laughs> from, uh, from the past and some that we've done recently, um, and uh, you know th those guys are my guys. We'll, we'll, we'll be together till the day we die. And uh, but yes, the answer is they still are still invested and <clears throat> and. In, in, uh, and, and our stock, they, they own some of the stock, so. Yeah, they have to be pumped about what Vegas has become. I think they're lifers, right? They were born and raised mm -hmm. there, and now it being part of the UFC, which brought a lot of life to Vegas, and then now with all the things, that has to feel pretty great. Go ahead, Connor. Yeah, Dana, uh, did you reach out to Connor McGregor after he threw out a first pitch that hit uh, the 10th row last night at a uh, no. baseball park or not? No, and, and, and you know what? You know how many times I've been offered to do that, and I'm like, fuck, no. I'm not doing that. <laughs> it, it's like... Every guy out there thinks that they can fucking fight, and they can't. And every guy thinks that they could go out there and throw a fucking a pitch from, from, from the mound to home plate and think it's easy. That shit ain't easy. And uh, you, you realize how easy it isn't when people go out and actually try to do it. I think he tried to. He had to have yeah. tried to throw he, that into the stadium. He lost it. I yeah. mean, he had to have tried to. I mean, <laughs> he had to have at this point. What is your relationship like with Connor? Is there just a mutual respect? Are you friends? What, is, what do you think right now? How would you judge Yeah, yeah we, 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 have, we, have, we have a very, very good relationship. And, uh, you know, Connor has been. 
been massive for the UFC and massive for the sport, um, you know, in, in the fight business. When you become a, as rich and as famous as Connor has, as fast as Connor has, things happen. You know? <laughs> yeah. and, and, and sometimes, you know, even around here, because I, I, I got s- some guys that work for me, and, you know, because this sport is, you know, has a martial arts base, you know, th- th- these people are, 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 are all good people, they're families, but let's, let's never forget, this isn't fucking IBM, okay? This isn't Microsoft. <laughs> we're, we're in the fight business. I got 700 fucking maniacs under contract, <laughs> uh, and let me tell you what, shit happens sometimes. Yeah, and by the way... You have to be to go into a cage. I mean, the, yep. the, the, the whole, whenever people start talking about some people, and, and like football players sometimes get this as well. Not me, obviously, because I was a punter, but other football players like, oh, he said some mean things or whatever. It's like, what do you think is going out there and putting a helmet on and running his face into somebody at 25 miles an hour? Like, there might be some shit that might come alongside that person. You just got to hope that they continue to grow as a human in that whole thing. In the history of the fight business, everybody hates everybody. I hate everybody, and everybody hates me. And we all fight and argue, and you know, I, I got now now Jake Paul's in here and he's talking shit, and I talk shit about him. And then uh, I hate Oscar De La Hoya. Oscar De La Hoya hates me. I hate that little weasel at Showtime, fucking Espinoza, that little scumbag. <laughs> and then uh, he hates me, and you know, that's this business. We're 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 in the mean, nasty business. It's and, con- you it's- know, I, I deal with that with the reporters sometimes. Did you hear what he said about him? And, uh, what, what do you think he's going to say about him? This is we're in the the meanest business on planet Earth. It's the way it goes. It's a conflict. Up and up. It's a conflict business. That's what it is. Actually, a conflict business. To, exactly. The biggest conflict business yeah. of all time. Last question here for you. We can't thank you enough for your time. Go ahead, Diggs. Dana, we had mentioned the sports books in Vegas. Do do you know if like fighters go in like they know how much of an underdog or how much they are a favorite, and do they use that as motivation going into a fight? Do you know that at all? Well, it's, it's exactly like he was just saying. You know, gambling in sports was, was like taboo 10 years ago. Now it's all coming together. And, yeah, I mean, we, we did the Contender Series last night. Before your fight comes up, these kids are watching in the back while they're warming up, and you see what the odds are. I mean, some of these kids are 3-1 to one underdogs. Last night a kid was a 2-1 to one underdog, and he won the fight. So, um, yeah. Yeah. The answer is yes. <laughs> hey, there is the last thing before we let you go, and obviously can't thank you. I know you're a busy fucking guy, especially with all these side projects you go with the team. <laughs> Damn. Hey, whenever we Google Dana White's net worth, let's remember that there is some cooking potential. Yeah. <laughs> Double. There's fucking Friday on the cooking network. Okay. Yeah. Then there's also some other businesses. Incredible work by you, sir. Obviously becoming a success. Whenever you see other league, like there's potentially another league being started up. And obviously Bellator had a buzz there for a while. Is that something for you to pay attention to? Or do you just kind of like, if we do what we do, it, nothing else matters? Yeah, listen, I love it. There, there's no barrier to entry to get into this business, man. So many guys have, have, have tried to get into the fight business or are in the fight business from Donald Trump, Mark Cuban, you name it. I mean, so many different guys have jumped in. It's a fun business. I, I, I get it. Um, but, yeah, no, all, all I do is I stay focused on what I'm doing, what I have to do, and uh, and me and my people. That's, that, that's all I worry about. Well, you seem to be doing a great job, and I can't wait to watch UFC 266 this weekend. What time's first fight? Uh, the first fight goes off at probably 4 o'clock, yeah? Just all night, just people beating the shit out of each other. <laughs> yes. I love it. Can't thank you enough. President of the UFC, Dana White. Appreciate yeah, you. Yeah, Dana! Dana! Woo! He's got billions of dollars. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Guy Fieri better to be shaking in his boots because he's coming for the Oh, no, you don't think Guy's going to be part of that show? Hey. Fucking Friday with Fieri and... Dana? No, no, no. It's Triple D. He got... This is FIF, pal. That's right. <laughs> okay. I, and there's no... I don't know how they're going to dance around that thing on the Food Network because I believe they're... Uh, most of their viewers, and maybe they're bringing in Dana to bring in new viewers or whatever, which I think I will watch at least the first couple episodes of For Fucking sure. Friday to see what he's cooking. Dana will pound Fieri's frosted tips to make his yep. bread, and I can't wait to see it. Boom. Thank you. What's your deal with Guy Fieri? Yeah, seriously. He got- spit on you like Trey Turner. That's my deal. No, no, no. Trey, 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 that's not his name. Nah, he told me he's going to make me famous. <laughs> Guy Fieri. Wow. Yeah. Who is he, Mason Ramsey? 
Yodel Boy? <laughs> Yodel Boy. Yodel Boy Fier? <laughs> Is that because he got famous at a Walmart? I don't know. He has a song, right? Yeah. Oh, my God. I don't know. I want to be famous. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs>